Okay, who am I talking to? People have a right to know. August Bleed. Okay, August, have you ever been, well, I actually do know because you're a friend of mine, but uh, have you ever been kicked out of anywhere? A lot of places. Why? About, um, <laughs> why? Well, most of them range um, from the criminal to the, um, the, the not so criminal. Um, <laughs> Most of them are for shoplifting and then um, a number of um, other um, illegal activities. What's your favorite uh, shoplifting story? Tell a couple of them. I know a hmm. couple of them. Let me think for a second. Well, I think my favorite one is um, when I went into Best Buy and I was walking around and went to the floor model section where they have the monitors displayed and just walked over to one and just kind of casually started dismantling it, packing up the cords and stuffing them in my pocket. And then, you know, so all that was left was the, the, the monitor itself, which I, I have this like kind of move that I do, this sort of like a yogic shoplifting maneuver in which the stomach, <laughs> <laughs> which you, uh, you know, you create a pocket in your stomach cavity by inhaling, and and that way you can stuff certain objects into this this particular cavity here, and and they'll remain concealed provided you wear baggy clothing. So, I went into Best Buy with a little bit of baggy pants and, and a little baggy shirt and a coat, and then stuffed the monitor actually right down my pants. <laughs> I used my belt to, uh, you know, tighten up the slack, and I walked out. And as I was walking out, well, the security guard started looking at me funny because at this time, the the monitor's kind of sticking up at the right here, and it's starting to fall out. Um, apparently, my yogic maneuver wasn't working quite as well as it normally had with smaller objects like books and you know yeah. other things. So. I started leaning over and, and feigning stomach pains as I was walking through the uh, security um, detectors, and um, I made it past them beautifully. They didn't say anything. Do you feel bad about it? Do I feel bad? Um, not for places like you know Best Buy and you know all the big chain stores. No, I don't feel particularly bad about that. No. Yeah. Let's see. What about, uh, how many times have you been um, banned or arrested in San Francisco? Uh, about probably 80 times now. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty uh, there, good. There's a lot of places that I, I forget that I've yeah. been arrested, well, that I had been arrested in before, which is the cause of subsequent arrests. Yeah. Because I, I would forget that yeah. I've been 86 out of one place in particular. Yeah. Go back and carry on, you know, some kind of shenanigan at, at the same place, and then they'd, mm -hmm. they'd kick me out again. And I'd insist that I had never been there before, but then they'd usually have some kind of documentation that they'd drag out and show oh, me the as proof that I'd actually been there before. The wall of shame also. Uh, well, they actually, they have, there are several notebooks of shame as well in the Bay Area. <laughs> notebooks of shame. I know. Actually, idea. Three, three ring binders of shame, really. That's <laughs> Three good. hole punches that uh, <laughs> yeah. stab the, uh, the uh, paper with the uh, perpetrator's photo, and then they're stuck into a binder. That's Those pretty are good. most of what I've seen, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. Well, I'm usually replete with some kind of, you know, social security number and a little photo of yourself. I know you did your little six month stretch, which is, were you in one of those warehouses, warehouse prisons, like a bunk bed? You know, oh yeah, yeah. Boat? Bunk beds are very popular in the prison. There are nutters uh, in industry. there. <laughs> oh, there's a lot. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of nutty people in prison. There. What's there are a lot best, of really scary people. What's prison. your best advice for someone in a bunk bed prison? In a bunk bed prison, don't step on your celly when you get down. Yeah. It's very important. Don't step on them. Don't step on them. I would say fold up your mind, fold up your personality. 
No, I think the most important thing when you're dealing with bunk beds is don't step on your celly when you're trying to get down from the bunk bed. Motherfucker! That's the cause of a lot That's pretty of good advice. <laughs> and then, um... Oh, I don't know. So we're gonna go to Dog Eared Bucks. And okay. I know you'd never steal from Dog Eared. No, never. Don't tell Alan. Yeah, that was before I knew Alvin, so it doesn't really count. No, he doesn't count. He used to follow me around the store though and try to catch me. <laughs> <laughs> never do it. Virgin? Yeah, you can. Right. So I'm like, well, whatever. Okay, so um, All right. tell me your name. My name is Mike, and my last name, but I, I, I go by Chicken Man as well. Okay. Alright. Have I you ever have, been kicked out of anywhere? Yes, I've been kicked out of a club called the Europa Night Club in Greenpoint, uh. Brooklyn. Um, and, wow, it's uh, really loud here. Yeah, you want it? You want it? Should we do it the other way? Yeah, let's do it the other way. Is it while the bus is passing by? Maybe we should go inside. Uh, should we? Or, Okay, so now, um, so, so hold on. okay, what's your name and have you ever been kicked out of anywhere? My name is Mike mm -hmm. and I go by Chicken Man as well. I've been kicked out of and banned from a nightclub called the Europa Nightclub in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I went to go see this band called the World Inferno Friendship Society play there in 2007. Mm -hmm. And they, I mean, uh, the opening band was called The Measure SA. Yeah. And I was running around with a red pepper in my hand and I drew a face in it and was calling it Sergeant Pepper the entire night. Uh -huh. And The Measure SA was the opening band during the first 30 seconds of their song. I ran up on stage and I staged them. And nobody caught me because no one was even in the crowd watching them. Oof. So I took the pepper and moved it. <laughs> to my face because I didn't want to get hurt and the pepper exploded in my face and blinded me because it was a red pepper. And as soon as I was on the ground when I was being picked up, yeah. it was the bouncer from the club and he threw me down the stairs. And I was downstairs arguing that I wanted to go back into the show and they said there was a no stage diving rule, which was completely bullshit because people stage dive there all the time. Right. I guess people don't stage dive onto peppers into the floor, but you know, it's a punk show and I was having fun. Anyway though, <laughs> I had a huge fight with the owner. Yeah. And was banned from the club for life because he threatened to call the police on me. Yeah. So I had not gone back to the club for about two years until this band Star Fucking Hipsters played there in May. It was a two year ban. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, a, it was a two year ban when I snuck back in though. Yeah. And I snuck back in and was very scared. And when I was leaving, the owner saw me and I had a huge fight with him again. And he told me that if I came back into his nightclub ever again, that he would call the police on me. He said that I'm not allowed there. So I got really, really scared. Then in October, Star Fucking Hipsters were going to play their record right. release show there. And I wanted to go, but I had no idea what to do. And there was a show going on there two nights before. So I tried to go there. And when I showed up immediately. I thought the owner wouldn't remember me, but he, he caught me and he told me to get the hell out of there. He might remember you. Yeah, he did remember me. I don't know how he did, but he, he fucking he remembered me. So Star Fucking Hipsters played there two days after that, and I really, really wanted to go because they're one of my favorite new bands that are around right now. <laughs> so I dressed myself up as a transgender UPS lady. I bought a wig and I put on lipstick and a whole bunch of makeup and threw on a hat and wore my UPS uniform and kind of stuffed my shirt. And I ran upstairs during their sound yeah. check and hid on a couch. Yeah. And then I hid on another couch and I saw the owner walking around the entire time. And then, when the Star Fucking Hipsters finished and the show was over, I left the club and I saw the owner and took off my wig and flipped him off. And he got really mad and he told me that if he ever fucking sees me in his club again that he's gonna have me arrested because there's a precinct next door. The next day, this band I Hate God played there and I really, really wanted oh, to Oh, I go. like I Hate God too, yeah. Yeah, no, and I tried to go and though. <laughs> <laughs> and he couldn't get no, in. No, he couldn't get in. Before, it was like the early 90s. Yeah, that's all. That's mostly what I do. It's, it doesn't involve equipment. Yeah. yeah. But sneaking into Europa as a girl to see star fucking hipsters for great, was great. You remember that? When I snuck into oh, yeah. your yeah, I dressed up as a girl with a wig. I thought there's a metalhead actually. There's a light through behind him. I was like, yeah. this metalhead, like, like this, because there's usually metal shows at the club. And there's this guy like this <laughs> with like long hair and like a beanie and it's like and then he's like it's me I'm like what? A beanie? Like, oh, it's chicken. Okay. You went there? <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, uh, not allowed at that club. Aww. And there's a precinct next door, and I don't want to risk getting arrested. I'm sorry that it is like every of your favorite bands in the world play there, and it's yeah. the one place you're banned from. It just sucks. That because, strikes me as well tragic. But I, I called up, I, I, I constantly prank called the venue every single time that there's a show going on there, telling them that I'm going to find a way to sneak in somehow. And the owner, it must have been the owner there for years, and he just really hates me. Like, if he was here right now, he'd probably punch me in the face. But I don't really care. That, that I mean, the venue sucks. The yeah. bands that play there are yeah, really good. They, good they, should, they should find a new venue to start having punk shows at, but there's not that many places to have shows out in New York really any more that are like venue wise because the knitting factory really? shut down. Did it? Oh that's right. But they moved it to Brooklyn, but yeah. I don't know, there's not a lot of all ages venues, so yeah. it stinks. But yeah, the venue the owners really suck, so Why well, I'm starting to not like Europa too. Okay, thank you for this eighty six interview. Anytime. Okay.